Hello everyone and welcome to another uh, traditional draft of uh, All Will Be One. Okay, there's a mythic rare. I have three of these, so I, I mean, maybe I don't have to pick it for collection. I might get another shot to pick the fourth one uh, in a future draft. Uh, but then again, it's a limited playable card if you can really just get the fixing. Like this pack has a prophetic prism, which could be the pick nine here. Um, so if I'm gonna take this, because this is of course an amazing card in limited, I would be trying to make the four color deck work, which usually means like you have like a, a two main colors and then you just splash the other two things. It's not impossible to go for that. It's also maybe fun if it works. The the best card, I mean the the most reliable card to pick here is the Tamius Immobilizer in terms of you know strength. It's it's the best card after that, you know. But this is the best card if you can cast it, but this is of course easy to cast, so uh, you could take the Immobilizer here, but I'm gonna go with the Mythic Rare, partly because it is gonna complete my playset, but also because um, because it's not really impossible to get to cast this in Limited when you first pick it, so you can um, get a bunch of fixing. Um, usually I would be having a cr green color as my uh, one of my main colors, because green has the fixing spell that can uh, get the basic land from your deck or or prolifer proliferate. Um, so the best two cards in the pack are the Infectious Bite and the Edifice. Uh, this can two for one, this cannot, but it's pretty efficient removal spell. Um, it's going to be one of those for sure. If I didn't pick the Atraxa here, I, th I think I would just take the Edifice, but now I'm gonna take the uh, Bite because I do want to play green as my main color for as long as I think I might be able to cast this Atraxa in this deck. Well, that is a black signal because this thing is very good. I'm gonna take it here. Uh, someone took the rare and someone to, uh, someone else took a common out of this pack. All three uncommons are still here. I wonder what common would be better than this. Maybe they were just they were just following their first pick, which is good news because if they are not drafting black, I might be getting past some black. Anyway, it's a very easy pick here. It's the best card. Uh, I'll just take it. And here, um, so this seems like it might be green black, and then I will be able to splash this or not. Uh, do I prefer the rat over the steward? This is better late in the game, but this is better in getting into poison. You know, maybe the, make, making the opponent corrupted or something. And you can just win with poison sometimes with a green black deck. I wouldn't take the four drop here. The necro titan would be also good if you have reliably the ability to corrupt the opponent. But I think this time I'd just save it to take the rat here. I should assume that black is going to be open because I got the Drowning Icro as a third pick from a pack uh, where a rare and common was missing. I can't imagine any common is going to be better than this thing. All right, so now we are at a, some kind of a crossroads here. I don't have to lock in anything, but now if I want to play the Atrax, I just should take the Atlas. But I have two very good black card, I could just take the best card in the pack, which I think is Charfoyter, slightly better than the Immobilizer. This is also a good one, but if I'm gonna take something that um, makes me move away from the Atrax, I would be taking the Charfoyter. Um, I think that's the choice. Atlas is a card you can get later on. I can still be an Atrax deck here. Um, okay, well, there is a Terramorphic Expanse, which would work with this thing. Uh, basically, uh, you know, this thing isn't red, so I wouldn't really want to play five colors, so I'm gonna either abandon the Char Forger or continue with the, maybe the red-black plan, because I do like the Resistance Skyward, and if this wasn't here, it would be an easy, maybe Terramorphic Expanse, although the Cultivator is good too, but now there is a Resistance Skyward, which I think is maybe worth considering after I took the Char Forger here. Uh, I'm gonna ignore the Atraxa here. Uh, <laughs> I'll take the Sky Warden. I think I'm gonna ignore the Atraxa here. And I'm getting another Prophetic Prism. And I don't have a lot of for, for red and uh, black here. Done. I could have taken the Phyrexian Atlas and the Terramorphic Expanse and now the Prophetic Prism to make this um, 
closer to reality now. Black Red isn't the best archetype for the cool daughter Cackler here. This isn't either. Black doesn't really care about oil that much. I think I'll take the prism now so I can still con continue with the Atraxa plan here. Although now that I see a Cacophonis camp here, it's another nice red card. Um, yeah, because now I could take the Cultivator for the Atraxa deck, but you know, it would be like a black green splashing for this, but I think it's just better to take the scamp. The Jar Forger is such a good card that I think it's worth, you know, playing this, getting this black red stuff because it seems to be open. Uh, not amazingly much, but some somewhat open. Don't care about the Gladiator in that act. I can take the Rosk album. This also, by the way, triggers from creatures leaving the battle, sorry, artifacts leaving the battlefield, so there's, there's albums do synergize with it. And um, okay, free from flesh or the centurion. Mm, well, this thing cares about oil actually, so maybe I'll take the free from flesh. And some red cards care about too, including the centurion. But I don't think this that great of a card. So let's just take this and um, paladin <laughs> um, thrill. Let's take the thrill. I think I'm pretty much red. Black now. Oh, I got a late pick steward for the green plan still. Well, I don't think a red black deck will play the reservoir. So let's take this. You know, keep the option still open. Pack two might give me something. I even got the atlas here. Not, not a big surprise though. Um, does this? Well, it does. So, I mean, does it? You know, and encourage me to <laughs> go go with the attracts plan because there's a contagious forak here. Um. And another thing is that there's not much for black red. The head cleaver isn't really the greatest in that archetype because you don't really care about the toxic stuff. It's just a two for menace for four. And when you are dealing wanting to win with damage, this isn't the greatest. This is great if you want to corrupt the opponent or actually win with poison. This is a good card in those decks. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna take anything else than the Burak here. Okay. Um Hex Gold slash Mir convert. Okay, well this is now the actual decision point in the draft, I believe, because now if I if I want to go with the Atraxa thing, I should just take the Mir convert here. But black red having hex gold slash here is quite nice. So I have a very good black card, but it will be also played in the Atraxa deck, by the way. Uh, this is the more fun thing to do, but I already missed some cards in the previous pack. I guess I got the Atlas pack, but I missed, I guess only a term of expense in the end. But man, passing the slash after picking these red, some of these red cards is so nasty. I, I mean, this would be playable in the black red deck, it's just not as good as the slash. Oh man, fine, I'll take the slash. Maybe it's a boring choice, but it is the better card. Alright, this pack is pretty decent for the black red eye, not so good for the, you know, attraction deck. So I think the rat, Skitterfang and the Cacophonis camp are the options here, out of which I think I like the Skitterfang most. Also, this thing benefits from uh, free from flesh, getting more oil on it. Um, yeah, Skitterfang is really a flexible card, can do some nice things with it. Okay, Axiom Ungraver. Um, I think I should cut now the nonsense, so to say. <laughs> there's another Vorak though. Jeez, also Teramovic Expanse. But there's also an Exiparant Fusion, which is you know, totally fine. Also, the Splitter wouldn't be that bad. Um, but let's now... Yeah, and Black ha hasn't really been open in this direction, sadly. So, I mean, I could still take the Vorak. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I'm gonna take the Fusling. If this, there wasn't the Fusling, then I would just like the, pick the Splitter, I think. Hmm. Well, now I'm getting a hex gold slash pick six. This is pretty, pretty um, uh, amazing, of course. Okay, I can take another engraver here, and I can take the splitter. So this is like <laughs> the pack two was all red cards, I think. I took a warak, of course, but yep. So what do I'm planning to play here? I don't plan to play the atlas or the prism. I think the other ones are fine. Consideration. I mean, I mean, this is a cuttable card, and um, 
Well, I mean, I guess most of the other cards are pretty nice to include in the main deck. Hmm, a lot of immobilizers here, but with the Char Forger and the Dr Drowning Icor, I think I should just stick to black and red. And I don't think the Asparent is that good. I have a one equipment though, but I think I'll just take the draw pitch here. It is a 2-3 menace, but um, I like it more when I have a well, usually red-white deck when I can actually get very good benefit out of the abilities. Uh, as just a card that is mostly going to be a 2-3 menace for 3, it's not that great. Okay, I get a Furnace Strider. I would maybe play the Skull Bomb in this deck too, but of course Strider is just great. I can have another 5 drop here, and here I'm gonna take the 3 drop. I have only about 3 black cards in the deck, plus the Skull Bomb, which is kinda black. Um, well, <laughs> I will see what happens in pack 3. I mean, I got this somewhat... Well, I don't know. Who knows what my opponents are drafting. Maybe they have also uh, changed their colors. Who knows? Okay, but now this is a a nice pack. There is a Volt Charge, of course. Quite good. Burn spell, of course. Also hits face. Proliferate can be useful in this deck. You know, Char Forger, Ungraver, Ingraver, Fusling. There are a bunch of that stuff. But the run is, you know, just a very good 2-drop. This can be a little bit awkward for the opponent to... I mean, they basically want to use removal spell on this thing. Each other creature that die once per turn from my side, not from the opponent's side, causes the drain to drain to that's a lot that's a lot of drain. I'm gonna take it over the burn spell there. And here. Well annihilating glare is probably the peak here. Yes it is. I don't care about the siphoner index like this, of course. Um how about here? Okay, I don't see a lot of black and not a lot of red either. Yeah, some good blue going here. Uh, this is just a wind rake in this deck. This is... Well, yeah, I don't care about the toxic stuff, really. Uh, I don't think I'm actually going to play any of these cards, so I'm just gonna take the Comedian. It's an uncommon. I really don't like the wind rake. Uh, when it, you know, can't do anything else. And I won't be really poisoning the opponent that much here. Um, cool, Dot the Crackler. I guess this can now be decent, but I have a multiple cards that can pick up some oil, so I'll take the Crackler now. Don't think I care about another 5-drop. I have two very decent 5-drops here. I don't need another one. So, Crackler. Uh, Aspirant versus, like, nothing. I guess I have a... Did I take pick a Kinsmith? I don't think I did. <laughs> I don't think I even would play them if I had, but... Yeah, I'll take this Aspirant now. Um, Hazardous Blast, Grimnark, how does the mana curve look like? How many creatures? 14 plus 1 uh, for mirrored in equipment, so 15. Basically, if I'm gonna play all of that. And the curve looked like this. I guess it's a little bit of an aggressive deck. I can take the Blast here. Um, splitter versus Headcliffe. This is easy Splitter, actually. Yeah, it is. I don't have a lot of black, but... What can you do? Um, another of these three drops or splitter number three I mean I don't have a lot of fours I have a number of threes in here the cackler okay let's just take the splitter <laughs> why not okay scamp is another thing that gets oil so that's good for what card I had something that cares about yeah it was the cackler here I suppose I can take the Scamp over the Autonomous Furnace here. I have a bunch of cuts to make, but I think the Scamp will make the deck. Mm. Don't really care about this 2-drop, but I'm not gonna play the Centurion, so I suppose I can take the 2-drop just in case I want to have it. This is a best of 3 draft, so I can might I might want to sideboard into more 2-drops against some decks. Sorry, maybe you might not see these cards, I'm just you know picking these. I forgot to put the other mode, but I guess you can recognize this now. The set is fairly old already. Okay. Yep. So, number of black cards is only six, but I am going to play them regardless, I think. I don't care about the Custodian. Um, 
This thing can pick up oil counters, it's relevant for the cackler mostly. Mm, 27 is this. Well, I don't need the thrill of possibility. How about the gladiator? Because I don't have that many twos in the end. One, two, three, four, two mana cards plus the gladiator and the icro. I have some one mana cards and the slashes which can work as a, um, you know, early, early play. Mm. I don't think I need the skull bomb. I will, the bread one. I, I will play the draw skull bomb probably. Um, yeah, I'm gonna cut them uh, from the main deck, the Gladiator. If I really want to have more twos, then I will put those in the deck. But I think I want to start with that thing in the deck. All right, so I'm gonna play the main deck Blast. It's actually quite cool in this format. I can sideboard it out against decks, you know, that it feels like it's not gonna achieve much. Uh, examples would be decks that have a lot of removal. So if I have at most, you know, one or two creatures on the battlefield at a time, uh, this is not gonna be that great. But uh, uh, it's gonna be useful, I, I would say, over 50% of the time. I would say more than that because I have some aggression here, although my two drops are one threes and then this thing which I don't want to involve in combat actually. But I have my three drops which are aggressive. These the splitters can equip my smaller creatures. Yeah, I'm gonna play the blast in the main deck. Now the question is, am I going to cut one more card to, you know, to play 17 lands? Or should I trust that the Axiom Engravers can help me find my lands? Because I do have two five drops in the deck. I want to hit my fifth land drop in any game where I draw this. I have also four four mana cards. But this thing can these things can dig you into more lands. I and of course I could cut the skull bomb. But I really like that I can get some of the good stuff back, like the run, char forger, maybe even when in the very late game I might have time to get back these five drops and recast them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with, with double engraver, I think I'm gonna play only 16 lands. Yeah. And this is now a five black card. Such an imbalance here, but what can I do? Black wasn't that open. After I took the drowning icon and then I picked this, I think it was like a first pick in a pack, wasn't it? Uh, that's really pretty much it. I got the very late char voucher, but that I got because it's red and red was very open, not because it's also black. Hmm. Yeah. The skull bomb, yeah, it is good with the skitterfang and charforger in addition to some of the other cards, but these are very good cards to have all the counters on. But I, I don't think I'm gonna play the skull bomb. No. I will not. So how about the mana base? Then I will play the the draw spits and um, I need of course a lot of more mountains than swamps but I have some black two drops I, I think I need to have six sources for black but probably not enough not not more than that this means I can have starting hands that have these black two drops but I don't necessarily have black source but I mean with all these red one one spells and that I think 10 mountains is gonna be required here and I have so few black cards that running seven sources for five cards seems really awkward. Yeah, that's the main deck. If I knew earlier in the draft that I'm gonna get two very late Warax passed to me, uh, I or maybe the first one wasn't a late one, but I would have gone for the Atraxa plan there. But of course you can't know such things beforehand. This is a great hand now that I drew the land number three here. So I can curve out here. Um, should I trade with that thing? I can play this with the token. I'm gonna play this and not block. Then I can play the Char Forger and I can block with the token here. Of course they can move the equipment by that time, but it costs mana early in the game every mana count, so maybe they don't have the extra mana to do that. And when they move the equipment away, this is only a two power creature. Okay. 
Drowning Iker. I can attack here because I have no intention to block with it. So I'm gonna bluff an attack here. Maybe they take two. And if they don't, it's the same outcome as I didn't attack with it because I don't need this as a blocker. And now this is two free damage. Char Forger is gonna be the play here, so I can block the 3 1 unless they move the equipment, but that's gonna cost one mana, like I said. And then, of course, this is a 2 2, which you know can't attack into the Char Forger unless they have a trick. They don't know if I'm gonna block or not. I wouldn't be blocking a 2 2 that's attacking into this board. It's just too valuable of a card, you know. On the other hand, when, when you have the Ran here, you wouldn't mind. Yeah, they actually chose with that. So now I'm gonna get the drain here. And they still can't attack with the 4-1, unless they move the equipment, of course. Well, they have the mana for it, so maybe they go for it. Okay, they chose not to. So maybe they have... Well, I don't know. Um... So... I... They are gonna get some of these 2-2s two once they have extra mana, but uh, I guess that's... How it goes, I do think I want to, hmm, I kind of want to race here, uh, it seems foolish to attack with a 1-1 one, one when they have a 3-1 they can attack with, which I don't have an, any intention of blocking, unless I play the Engraver and the Scamp, um, but I do want to play the Aspirant because that allows me to cast the Splitter for one of fewer mana. Okay, I'm not gonna attack with this guy, fine. And of course, not going to attack with the Thane either. I don't like them getting those free two. Well, it's not free one once, it is gonna cost two mana. But later in the game, they are pretty free when they do have the mana available. But maybe not at this point yet. And this thing is activated at any point, so not like an activate as a sorcery, so they can use the engraver and then get a 1-1 one -one if they want to. Okay. So am I willing to trade the aspirant with the 3-1? I think I am. Because this would be tapped if they want to use this thing. Of course they might have a trick too, but I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna play this and I'm going to attack with the 2-3. It has menace. They can of course just double block with these guys. Then I will th still trade here and uh, and then of course I will get to trigger the run here. This is fine. And now my 4-2 is going to at least require something else in addition to the 1-1 one, one here. I guess they can get another 1-1, one, one, but... Well, the Vran has done already a lot of work here. They do have an infinite, you know. I mean, I might at some point actually use the Drowning Icaro on this thing, but I feel like there's going to be a better target for it. But who knows, maybe the Engraver is... The card I have to get rid of because that is now the card that allows them to get those two 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 mana one ones every turn. Okay, another splitter which I can't no longer cast because I lost my aspirant. Hmm. Splitter with the scamp is <laughs> quite good, by the way. Uh, don't know what I'm supposed to do here. I, I mean, I know I could kill this thing, but they can still, you know, use this and make a one. But they they could double block the double block the four two here. Well, basically a two two with an equipment on it. Uh, it it feels like a waste of my removal. I don't have that much removal. I have a couple of hex gold slashes in the deck, but maybe it's just worth. Worth not caring. I'm, I'm gonna let the run do its thing because every turn I lose a creature, I get to drain two life from them. 
So I'm gonna let this trade happen with the. I mean, however they choose. Do they wanna make two one ones or trade with the two two token, whatever they choose? But yeah, this is a good combination. They will get a lot of, a lot of um, you know, card selection there as well. So I feel like maybe I actually should drown in Icar this thing. I don't get to benefit from the proliferating. If this was on the battlefield, then I could, but maybe it's not worth it because I do want to play this camp now because I can then, you know, equip it. Ah, it is really annoying though to use the icon thing. They might have something big. Yeah, fine. Okay, let's just play the rat here. But I have to assume they will get to play relevant spells every turn now because they can ditch extra lands. More splitters. Okay, well my deck has three splitters too. Okay, there's that thing. Now they don't have mana to make a thing there. Um, okay, so if I do it, I mean I have to equip this camp, right? It's too valuable now. Whatever they block with, they're gonna lose another creature too. So this is a really easy easy equipment now. And uh, just go with this plan in here. Ron is <laughs> doing some serious work here. So they go down to nine. I could sack this. You know, this actually can deal to a six to them total, but I don't think it's worth it. Because if I sack it now, I wouldn't even get another. This is once per turn only. So I wouldn't be able to get the drain from this thing. The combination of Scamp and Bran can actually be enough to win the game. I have also, I'm stuck at three lands, but it doesn't even matter. I have been able to do relevant things every turn. And I can sack the 1-1 one, one on the Claire as well. Destroy creature or planeswalker. Okay, they can do that. They can't really attack because I can also, you know, jump block and trigger this Bran here. Also tempting. I think I have a win for the next turn if I do it. Unless they kill now Ran before the damage. Okay, yeah. This is great. This is actually great because now I do have a kill with the Anna Held and Claire. Don't even think there's anything they can do about it. I mean, I don't need the Anna Held and Claire even. I can just attack with this thing. I guess they can block with their scrap culture, but... Uh, I mean... Because I can sack this trigger run, but I, I might as well do this first. They have to block with the scrap culture because otherwise they will lose. Scamp is gonna deal three to them. Now, if they make a one one to block with, it's they're gonna lose. Because this gonna deal three, they're gonna lose two life. That's exactly enough. So that's <laughs> that's how uh, this has this is the best best use of use of run I've seen. You know I. I have had it before, but this was like, I don't know if you go go through the <laughs> turns. I mean, this was probably, was it like 12 life loss? I mean, not, not just life loss, but actually life steal. I think at least 10. But it's, it's you know, huge. I basically won because of the run. If this was any other 2-drop, they would be at over 10 life now. Okay, so they are red-green. Um, Sadly... I don't have any there. I don't have the great two drops that can get rid of artifacts if you sack a creature when it ETBs. Uh, is anything here necessary like the gladiator? I don't have a lot of things to sideboard. Skull bomb. I guess I have stuff like the skull bomb and the thrill of possibility that I can use to replace useless cards. Something, some cards that can be useless in this matchup. I think the blast will be good still. I'm going to play it even though I'm on the draw. I could see not playing it. Then again. These are a tempo lost as well. It's not like these affect the board in any way. So I don't think it makes any sense to sideboard this out on the draw for these kind of things, which are also quite, quite bad on the draw. Um, yeah, you could have like the gladiator instead, but I don't think... Yeah, they also have the engraver. I, I, I'm not going to be worried about their early game. Hopefully I don't get punished by it. I think all the cards in here are good enough. I'm gonna just keep it as is.
well, classic. Zero lander, but the opponent did mulligan too, so this is kind of fair. And how, how am I gonna do with this? I th I have only six uh, sources for black mana, so even with the engraver, it's not that easy to find them. I have a one drop, and if I draw a land in two draw steps, I get, get to still play this. I guess I also have only three more black cards in the deck. This is tough. This is very tough. Because these are kind of useless if I don't hit my... But going to five... I mean, I have now a game plan here. Fusling with the engraver if I draw any land. And this can hit, help me hit more, more land drops. But these are kind of useless. Okay, I'm gonna go to five this time. <laughs> well, it's at least easy to find the cards to cut in here. What the heck is this? Zero lander into one lander into six lander. That's that's classic non-game stuff there because, and then I drew a seventh land into this six lander, and they have an adaptive into reservoir combination here. Yeah, I don't think the game is gonna last that long. This is gonna pick up a growing size every turn now. Yep, yep. I have a removal spell for it, so I can. But yeah, now this is because of the engraver they made it into a 3-3 already, so now I have to take 4. Next turn, when I have this thing, it's gonna be a 5-5. Five five. So, oh, they actually chose, I mean, this has to mean they have a 4 power or toughness. Oh, this is actually not gonna work for them. Because, the, yeah, this is not gonna work how they wanted to do it. They made a mistake because first the token enters the battlefield, and then it, it, at that point it checks, the adaptive checks what's its power at, or toughness, and it's only a 2-2. Two, two. And then after it has entered the battlefield, this gets equipped, and it's too late for this to care about it. So now I actually just saved their 4 damage by them giving this engraver the counter instead. Okay, so, scamp. Well, now I can actually just do this, because now this is gonna be... A 4-4 four, four, unless they have like a 5 toughness or power creature. Which is, which is possible, but they're gonna grow this once. I could have even attacked here, but that, that's a little bit too risky. I can just block the token here or something. But the free from flesh, can that can actually help me deal with the adaptive. That still, you know, is not great because they have the reservoir pumping out 2-1-1 two, two, one, one tokens all the time. Yeah, because I have no game plan here currently. I mean, in terms of offense. I can only try to defend, but they have an ever-growing creature here. And I have to use two cards to get rid of it. They have infinite card selection here, thanks to the Reservoir and Graver combination. I don't really think this is gonna end well for me. But I can try. So here I'm gonna do this. I know I could attack here, but it's just, um, I mean, I don't want a 2 for 1, I want to, I mean, how, how can I get here 20 power to actually <laughs> make them? I mean, because I could use use the Hazardous Blast to win, I guess if I just draw only spells for the rest of the game, or like 5 turns back to back, and I can draw one of my removal spells. I have actually only one removal spell that works on this now, but, okay, well. So let's see, this is gonna be a 6-7, and uh, I can free from flesh to actually make it so that this adaptive dies now. I guess I could have still killed the engraver here, kind of for free, but I think I had to just kill the adaptive anyway, so... So let's do that. Now they can make a 1-1 token here, or they can play an as pirate. Which they can block with if they want to. Well, I got another splitter here. I guess I am. Well, I have to do the aggressive play here. I'm gonna say that uh, uh, this thing can't block. Or maybe maybe this thing can't block. I'd rather block them block with the engraver here actually. I, because I actually would rather take them make them take the damage. But um, I think they wanna keep the engraver here because of the 
fact that they can use the combination with the reservoir quite nicely. They can make this into a four power melee sky, but I do have a game plan now involving the hazardous blast here. If they just take a little bit more damage, I can equip the Centurion. This is actually going to be nine damage worth of attacks. So let's see if they they might some block with the one one, but I can take this guy a couple of more times. So let's see what happens when I do this. They might just, you know, if they don't have a spell, they can get a 1-1 one, one, one to jump block with. If they, if they discard a land here, for example, and then don't, don't draw an instant here. They can make that, but I think they are going to use that for blocking. Otherwise, I would just have a victory on the next turn. Um, no reason to show them any. I mean, I, I'll keep two cards in my hand. There's no benefit playing the mountain here. Okay, am I going to actually win with the blast here? Well, not not on this turn, of course. But if they take, well, it really depends on what they draw. But well, if they put down a, like a big creature here, or they have a removal for my guys, then of course it'll be. Oh, but this is actually huge. That's a great, great card to have. I hope they just don't win on the next turn because I'm ca I can't block this. If they have a titanic growth, I will lose. Okay, another 1-1 one, one here. So if they don't have a titanic growth, I can just win on the next turn. Despite them having all that. Okay. I mean, this is now 14 damage to their <laughs> 9 life. So even if they kill one of these guys, a 5 power guy, this is still a lethal. They would need 2 removal spells or some kind of life gain, which... Could be that forest and a troll. They go to 12, but that's almost all their mana, so then this is gonna still be a lethal attack unless they also have a removal spell. This guy has menace anyway, so they have to actually consider the fact that I can put both of these splitters on this five power menace guy. This would be nine power menace, which is lethal by itself if they don't have a removal or two blockers or life gain. So this is actually, <laughs> well, I guess the Hazardous Blast was a very good card here after all. So what I hope that they do is just tap out, play some creatures there, don't have a titanic growth. They waited so much, so long there that that would be like bad manners if they just waited for like a half a minute and then just have the titanic growth there. Okay, cannot be dealing with that. Doesn't matter. This also gets oil when an oil, uh, sorry, a when an artifact leaves the battlefield. Okay, well this is now pretty easy. This is really easy now. Just... They can't block with the 1-1 one, one even if they create it after... Um, if, even if they create it after... You know... <laughs> uh, making the... I mean, this can resolve and they can make a 1-1 one, one if it still can't block. So I don't need to use the Hex Gold Slash on it. What I can use the Hex Gold Slash for is the Aspirant. I mean, if they somehow survive this turn, but the 1-1 one, one can't block here, so there's no problem. That's, that's just a you know, universal effect. Doesn't matter if creatures enter the battlefield after it has been resolved. That was it. Mulligan to 5. Well, opponent did Mulligan to 6, but I think they had a better starter, but somehow... Somehow my Woolsock splitters did some work, and uh, I guess the critical turn was when I had the Cacophony Swamp with the Splitter and then the Free from Flesh which was able to get rid of their, you know, the evolving adaptive there. Apparent goes for the Mulligan um, I think this time I'm keeping it because I have the scamp, this can draw me a card and I need only one land to play the Centurion. I have only five black cards in the deck, so I'm not worried about not having access to black mana right now. It would be very unlucky to draw multiple black cards here before before one of the black mana sources here. And I can just cycle this thing. Opponent is at six cards now, uh, deciding if they should go to five or if they're gonna keep it and and what card in that case which of the cards they are gonna not keep in there so they did keep six there and I have my third land already 
Now this centurion would get a counter when I cycle this thing, but if I have nothing else for turn 2, I think it's gonna be just a skull bomb into... Skull bomb into... <sighs> drawing a card, except that maybe not now when I have the black mana so I can actually activate it. Well, first of all, I just attack here. I don't think they're gonna block. This can get rid of the siphoner. Of course, once I once this dies in some way, manner, and of course, I, I mean, of course, it gets. The <laughs> I forgot it has a very nice ability. You can sack it if it deals damage to them. So of course, I'll just uh, do this and uh, do this. So I think I'm gonna leave this calm as as it is because I have a three and four drops here, maybe even a five drop. This could be a nice curve out. So I can save this until it gains, gains me the card from a graveyard. There's really not much benefit from cycling it right now. Okay, that's um, that's a card that I would assume is quite decent against black or white specifically. There's gonna be some mites and some natural one toughness creatures there as well. And they didn't have a 3 drop. Now they did mulligan to 6, so it's possible they had to keep a sub power hand because they just didn't want to go 5. But I assume they have a play for this turn. 4 drop of some kind. Oh no, that's not a 4 drop. Um, yep. Not gonna need to do anything else than this. And this. And now if I draw a land, it's fine, I get to play the strider. If I draw a spell, well then I have a spell and I can cast all of my spells except for the 5 mana creature. And I guess there's the black removal spell that has an additional cost of either sacrificing something or uh, playing for mana, paying for mana, but we'll see. Um, well, this is pretty easy, I'll just play another splitter, I attack with this guy. Of course, if they take the damage here, it's going to be... Okay, they go for the chumps, which is nice. They get rid of those mites anyway. Um, but yeah, if they take some large amount of damage here, of course, the, the blast is going to be quite nice. There's already 11 damage I can deal with the blast. I mean, assuming they don't have any removal of all my creatures. Alright, I think it's time to just blast to, to actually kill their stuff, isn't it? Even if I draw a land, and I didn't, so... Well, actually, I am at... Okay, so what I can do, I can try to kill the Attendant, it's possible to do that, maybe. I mean, if they don't have a pump spell, but man... If I blast now, and, and if they don't have a... They might have, you know, the Exile creature with mana value 3 or less. But if they don't, they would be taking 11 damage going down to 5 with only one blocker left, which can't even block these that well. I don't know. I don't know, there are actually multiple options. First of all, there's no really rush here for me to try to win quickly. I can't. Maybe I'll just check if they have the... Okay, I'm gonna check it if they have the boost belt. They did it. Okay, well, this is easy then. Um, I'm going to play this. I'm gonna leave a blocker here, I guess. Because the... Yeah, I don't want to get corrupted here. And if they want to block this camp with the siphoner, be my guest. Because they're gonna go to 8 now, most likely. Or actually 7 if they don't block this camp here. So, the blast is gonna be lethal anyway. So the, them being at 4 isn't gonna matter that much. So I do I do rather. I guess it's maybe time to... No, I'm, I'm not gonna crack this yet. So now I can block one of these, so I won't get corrupted if they have a, some kind of corrupted payoff. Might have a, you know, the planeswalker that kills everything over there, so they have just that. Not gonna matter. So here the thing is, 
they don't they have actually three creature cards but they would have to pay two life to be able to activate this now i don't want to show them the blast it's actually not in best of three it's quite important to not show such cards that opponent might prepare for in the next games because this is just a lethal attack isn't it very simply a lethal attack so um i'm gonna draw actually a card here just to get the land for this thing ideally but yeah this is lethal attack i mean if they have one mana they might have a minus one minus one and proliferate but I mean, it's not. Good. They would have to kill the Centurion right now, and they still have to, you know, block with this so that it dies. Okay, Charf Watcher is pretty sweet, even if I don't get a land. I get a land. I can show them the Furnace Strider. That's not really a kind of card that I'm gonna want to hide. This is a very typical common you play in red deck. So the fact that I have this here is not gonna allow them to play around it but if i now showed the hazardous blast they might actually make some decisions about you know maybe not having the, all of these toxic one toughness creatures now i would actually hope to have another hazardous blast in my sideboard because of what i saw here but i sadly do not um anything that's gonna matter no my sideboard doesn't actually have good tools against their deck so i guess i'll just uh, Ship, ship the same deck. I do have like a couple of those hex gold slashes, for instance. That's very good to kill their early drops. Okay, that's a nice starting hand. The opponent also mulliganed. I mean, again in this game when I now oh, I don't even have to draw anything specific. I can just curve out with this hand quite nicely. Probably going for the rat here. Although the cackler is... Yeah, this is gonna actually attack as a big... But yeah, then again this hits for two, yeah. Because of course if I play the engraver it will pump the cackler when it attacks. But um, this only deals one damage and this is gonna deal two, so maybe it's kind of the same. Okay, so they can now choose to... Mm -mm -mm. I wonder if I'm supposed to use the free from flesh, because it's actually... If this thing picks up oil counters, uh, it also counts for the cackler, and I can still... Oh no, I have only one <laughs> red mana, so I, I was thinking I can play the engraver and the free from flesh. Well, that's not something I can do here. So, uh, instead... I will be... I mean, they might just not block. And if they block, so what? I, I was thinking about playing something with oil counters pre-combat, but I actually don't want to play the Skitterfang. Then they don't block, because I'm not gonna block their rat with the Skitterfang. I wanna play the 2-3, and this doesn't have oil counters on it. So they might just take it. Now they need some trick to be able to attack into the cackler. Now if they do attack, I, I I just can't block, it's too risky. This is too beneficial of a card. Okay, they had the removal spell, so now they are just uh, corrupting me and now I have to... Well, this was a very decent one. Um, well, I'm just gonna play my 3 mana card. I don't actually care about using any ability here currently. Because life gain isn't as relevant as, you know, <laughs> preventing the poison from happening. I know I could have played the engraver to block the rat, actually. But I feel like I um, don't want to... Well, doesn't seem to matter, actually. <laughs> they have the removal. Exile-based removal to make my draw scalbums. Scalbum especially bad. So now I am not in such a good shape anymore. But I at least drew the second red now, so I can do this. The thing is that this, when it dies, it will proliferate, so this takes down me. I, I think I just have to use the blast to kill the siphoner. I guess I hope they play something with one toughness. 
but um yeah I, I need to get rid of this because it's gonna take me down or rather take my poison count up uh that's gonna be a trick i don't want to double block if it's the indestructible uh, and death touch trick so i'm gonna let them trade with one of these i'm gonna trade the trick with one of my engravers yeah well that's same outcome actually but now I'm down to well, up to seven, <laughs> so I do need to exactly use the blast here just to get rid of the siphoner. There's no way. Yeah, I guess it's a one for one. <laughs> and then I, I wanted to uh, play that mountain even though I have the engraver here because I might want to, you know, use. A, I mean, they might have a trick when I attack with this. Against certain dicks, the, uh, what did I say? I, I said a very funny word there, sorry. Against certain tricks. Oh man, why did they play the one one after I used my blast? Damn it. Uh, I can, you know, counter with my own trick, but they didn't have it. And now I can start discarding stuff. Um, yep, I can get back another engraver if I want to. Maybe I should just do it right away, although. Although, although. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll maybe do it. Oh, there is a char forger too. Huh. Well. Well, I'm gonna play that. Let's still play the lantern. And they might block with their rat, but. Then I get to have two counters on the Chaff Watcher. As long as I, tr uh, you know, get, uh, you know, I need to order the triggers in case the automatic ordering. Now, well, this is the correct order. First, I want an oil counter to be added, and then I want to proliferate. But I am all now at eight poison, so of course, uh, the black black spells can proliferate a bunch of more. So, so it's possible that I won't be surviving here because I am having too many poison here now. All they need is the f uh, five drop from black, that proliferates as an ETB. Okay, they didn't have that, so that thing dies. Didn't have the three counters, and then, 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 then. Uh, kind of want to. <laughs> hmm. Well, I, I guess attacking for one damage isn't gonna be that great, so I'm going to use this right now. Okay, drowning Icar. Should I just kill it? I feel like I don't want to kill that guy because I have the f free from flesh in here. So if they attack and have a trick, I can still maybe benefit from this. If they have removal on both of these guys, I mean, then just what can I do? <laughs> they have already played one, two removal spells, I guess one semi removal spell. Chorus. As long as these are ground guys, I don't mind. I have to, I have to also save this for a flyer. I know they have an, at least one pestilence siphoner in the deck. Now, can I afford to? Guess I have to afford to do this. Hope to draw an on land. Scamp is fine. At can at least it can block. Now, this might be a spot where I do want to, in fact, use the drowning icor here, because that allows me to start dealing damage with the scamp could even attack with this one one in that case and I can proliferate more stuff on everything there okay let's let's do this now I think it's time to go for it they go to six poison I don't think I'm going to win with poison though uh, I will not attack with the second and craver even though I have no intention to to you know use the ability I want to have two blockers so that they need at least two removal to be able to connect for one poison. Okay. I do have a lot of oil here now. A lot of pings coming here too. 
And the hex gold slash is going to be great. Um, I'm going to attack with... I mean, it's actually going to be relevant to attack with. I'm going to leave only one blocker because I do have the slash in here. I do want to you know, get rid of their life total before they get multiple proliferating effects here. This is unblockable damage, but it's not that fast clock when they are still at 7 here. Okay, so now they get that thing. Um, I can slash it. If they block, they would have to... They have the creatures, but they would have to pay 4 life currently to make it indestructible. Hmm. So if I just attack with everything, what happens? They can't of course block with the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, they would go to 4 life, so they can't make this indestructible. If they don't block at all, I can take the damage here. Yeah, I think I have to sack my... my. I, I guess they're gonna block the scamp, because the scamp can deal unblocked damage. I hope they don't have a trick of any kind. And now this does mean I will have to take one from the, this guy. And I go to 9 poison now. But this also allows me to win, I guess, in... Well, it depends really on what they draw. But I, I really don't think I was able to afford... I could have jump blocked it, but just killing them with the scamp is not gonna be good enough. I mean, when they were at 7 life, this is too many turns for pinging and I just have to start jump blocking. When they untap, they get to make this indestructible, so this was the way to get rid of that thing. And now, sadly, I will land in my hand. I will go to 9 poison, I will die to any proliferating effect now. And these colors have a lot of them. That's horrible too, I need an actual removal spell for that. Because that's gonna gain me enough life too. Yep, okay, now removal or bust. Yeah. It's not gonna work. I mean, they gain two life per turn now. I guess I can attack, but if they do flood out here, there's a chance because I, can, I got my menace guy at least here, yeah, and that this can still ping here. Yeah, okay, so let's just trade here. Oh, they left that guy to block. Okay, interesting. Sadly, they have more card draw tricks there. Something like a Vraska's Fall will just be enough. <laughs> hey! Why did I say it? Okay, so they had a very good poison start in there. I still don't think I have you know, anything in my sideboard to kind of deal with it, so let's just uh, hope that on the draw I can I can um, uh, maybe withstand their onslaught a little bit easier. Okay, I have a great hand. First time with the Fusling, I think. But yeah, I have... Um, by the way, the opponent also... They, it seems like their deck is decent, uh, consistent two-color deck, but they again had to mulligan here. I guess they're just going for early for early plays, because that's how the Toxic deck wins. It, it doesn't really win in any other way. Mm. How to... Not even sure if I should... I guess I'll play the Scamp first. Because then when it dies, this gets a counter. Okay, they have Codus in there. Um, well, <laughs> I am... I would have to take the one poison. I'm not going to... Block with the Fusling, of course, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to attack here for the reason that they might have the flyer, but they are not going to play the flyer as... But anyway, I, I want to play the Char Forger before this camp dies. So I'm going to let them just... Uh, 
attack for one poison here now. I have of course the Hazardous Blast, which is very nice in this matchup. Yeah, you, you get to deal your poison now, there's no, no point in blocking with either of these guys. I can block with the 1-1 one, one on the next turn, for instance. Okay, they can do that, which is fine for me, because I have a better target for them. I mean, maybe, they have, maybe they have another one of those, but if they don't... Um, that was... I mean, I'm happy they took my 1-1 one, one out. Or let's say one toughness creature, this does get a larger power, but it's still always gonna trade with anything that has one toughness. Well, they have an ossification. Well, I mean, fine. <laughs> Be that way. Be that way, then. Okay, so they are actually looking to... Ah. That's a shame. I think they're gonna have... They have the 1-1 one, one flyers. But why do I not have any more creatures? I mean, they had two removal spells on my actual kind of threat level cards. Now with the blast, I might let them... No, I don't know. With the blast, this is really miserable though. I mean, it's not miserable that I have it, but um, maybe the fact that I don't have creatures is miserable, but... I mean... Losing this camp now is just not gonna be worth it. Not not on this Chorus. I can't really attack either because I, I want to block the Chorus with this one one, not with this camp. I will make them, you know, commit to the board more. The fact they had two removal spells on my threads. Um that's not great. Yeah, fine. Sure, let's use the slash for that. Fine, whatever. <laughs> oh man, I have these removal spells, but... I don't want to take poison here. <laughs> this is only two damage, it's not gonna be... Oh man, great removal spells, but I need threats. I don't want to take poison. I'm gonna attack here and and uh, block the one one with my own one one. The fact yeah, opponent has five spells in their hand. Okay, now they they decided that it's not worth it. And I think it's time for me to decide that blast is the play now. I take another poison here. I have the engraver, so I shouldn't do that. Let's kill those guys and attack now. Massive 2 damage per turn, this is not going to be great, but I mean, I can kill two of their next creatures, at least. More of that. Okay, now I got an engraver here, so I can attack with this guy. Yeah, their deck is really vulnerable to my... Ah, uh, blasts. Sort of. Now I have a 1 3 to block with. I don't have a 1 3 to block with. I'm corrupted right now. So it's just a. Um, drowning Iker, I guess. But yeah, they still have two spells. But I have one removal here and I have redraws. Okay, that is at most two spells now. They have another piece of removal. Um, I'm gonna leave that as a blocker and then ship the land. Don't think the one damage is gonna matter that much here after all. <laughs> yeah, the... Okay, my scamp can deal with that. But yeah, multiple hazardous blasts would be really good in this matchup. Okay, that's also quite good. So 
Let's play the Centurion because that thing can be an oil counter after uh, this camp dies. Okay, so now I'm having the better board, more cards. I have the removal, removal spell for one of the good things they might have here. Grimdark. I don't have the removal spell for it. Jeez. That was not great. Okay. They have exiled two of my things. <laughs> so I have um, Cacophonis camp in the graveyard. Fantastic. Well. Um, I guess that's what I'm gonna have then, just to, because this will pick now an oil counter, and I can make this being unable to block, so I can attack for some damage here. So this would be now 6 damage, it's gonna be worth it. Take action, this won't block. And uh, they have only one blocker still, so I can go wide. Sign new dancer. Tap target creature. All right. Whoa, they want. They don't want to attack with that guy. I'm gonna block with the scamp, and the dancer will die. I guess the dancer was dying always with the scamping on the battlefield. <laughs> scamp is really good. Okay, furnace strike. This is just a win now. It is exactly win, because now they block the strider and they take six. That is five, that is six. That has death touch, it doesn't have a lifelink. Alright, that was a match win. Yeah, they had so many one ones that um, if I had more, more of these hazardous blasts, that would have been pretty good. So, in best of three, you definitely should consider Picking them rather early in the draft to have also additional ones in the sideboard for this kind of matchups. Hmm, on the draw, but hand is acceptable. I do need more lands, but I suppose I can find. Well, I add the I have additional draw here with the skull bomb. Red green in this matchup, the hazardous blast might not be the best thing, and they have of course this curve out because why wouldn't they? I uh, especially if I do miss now my land drop, that's gonna start being very bad. I did not miss though, so. Well, I guess the 2 3 is the only reasonable play here. If I could draw the fourth land right away, the splitter would at least allow me to block here. Okay, they didn't attack, so they don't have a trick. I wouldn't have double blocked. Now. I did draw the fourth land, so I have a good good draws here now. Despite keeping the two lander, I actually got all I wanted. Um, so this is just... I know I have the free from flesh, but I, there's no reason to risk an attack here. They might might easily have a counter trick of their own. So let's just play the 4-2 here. And uh, and, uh, and uh, this could be a game where the <laughs> Hazardous Blast actually is going to matter, because creatures haven't traded. Creatures haven't traded yet, so that's good news. But they might have their plus two. Uh, so <laughs> let's try to deal some damage here. Of course, if I drew, draw also the fifth land, that would be huge. But it's not huge in the sense that I could be attacking into this board. I, I would be attacking with the Cackler because that would get plus one, plus oh, and I wouldn't mind training with the Vorak. And I guess there's two what? 
trading with this 4-2 isn't the end of the world because this is just a 2-2 in fact. Okay. Oh, another splitter, that's not bad. Sure. Let's trade with the 2-2. Why not? Not gonna use the free from flesh. I mean, first of all, it's just gonna you know, prevent me from playing the splitter if that's happening, so... Let's have another one of these, and now... So they haven't really played anything. I, I'm curious what they have in their hand. Removal, I suppose. Okay. So there goes the blast plan. Mm. Now this is for power, but if they have any kind of a trick, the strider won't be that great. As an attacker. I guess I can get it back with the skull bomb. So there's that. But if I had one more mana, it would be so much better. I guess I'm gonna leave it as a blocker here for now. And next turn I can attack with the free from flesh. Okay, first damage here. Maybe they have another vault charge or something like that. I can actually equip the strider, strider and attack as a 6-5. Maybe they have a big creature now, but they have already, they had already 6 mana on the previous turn, so do they have a 7 drop in the deck? That's gonna sack something to kill my splitter, I would assume. Or the skull bomb? No. I guess the skull bomb is, makes sense too, because it can, it's a 2 for 1 for me, so they might... I want to destroy it, so that I don't get the 2 for 1. Yep. So now they do have their... <laughs> I'm gonna go for this, and I suppose I am going to... It doesn't seem like they have any... Yeah, they don't. Okay, so now I'm actually... So, so the thing is that the opponent is just flooding out here and I win with Hazardous Blast because I, I can't really imagine them having anything else than lands in their hand. They didn't double block here because it's way too risky. Okay, so they had a handful of lands. That's the only explanation. But I mean, I've been there. They had how many... Four cards in hand. It's possible they had three lands and then maybe they drew some insignificant spell this turn. Because they could have, you know, still tried to stabilize by double blocking here. Maybe I don't have any trick. They lose the board, they lose this, then they have a... Yeah, but the problem with the splitters is that even my two... I mean, for them, the problem is that even my two twos are four twos or uh, six twos, which can really matter. They trade with anything. Yeah, anyhow, that is red-green. Now, the Hazardous Blast isn't going to kill any creatures. But is this gonna be the, you know, is this gonna be the, how the game goes? You know, is this gonna be a, is there gonna be a board style of some kind? This was an odd game because they clearly was, they were flooding out. Of course, if they weren't flooding out, I would have won this game with this spell, but I could see, you know, playing some nonsense like a thrill of possibility instead of the Hazardous Blast, because on the draw it's even worse. But it's such a nice I win card. Especially if they do play around to remove a, uh, sorry, combat tricks. They might take some damage. Not trade with my creatures. Okay. I'll respect the Hazardous Blast enough to still play it. And there's not really much in the sideboard there to put. Um, I haven't sideboarded anything in any of these games. Just because there's just not much there. Not much at all. Mm. Yeah, this is not a keep. If I had, if the Char Forger was a mountain even, I could keep this because I would be able to assume that I probably get my fourth land by turn four. Here I have just a one one. Now I'm gonna mull this hand. <laughs> That's a bad hand, but at least it has playable for the early game. And now I do need one of the six swamps. That's not a lot of swamps. It might take a few turns before I can make it happen. 
Wow, I got it. Another two. Two, um. <laughs> Another, you know, black card. I have five black cards in the deck. I, my first, after keeping this in all mountain hand, my first two draw steps were a black card and a black card. Two out of the five. Yeah, this is not great. Unless I drew draw a swamp right now, then it's actually great. Then it would be great. <laughs> oh man. That was... Because that's not a lot. I have five swamps and then the black enders tapped land. So I drew one of my five swamps here. Okay, then the trade happened there. Interesting. Chimney Rebel. I'm gonna race. Okay, that's gonna be good. But first, let's just play the this guy here. Now the trade with the 1-1 one -one token isn't gonna be that great for them. This gives a flying vigilance death that's all lifelink. Let's see if they kill the Thane here. I think it's rather important to kill if they can. That will give me another counter here. At three counters I can get the card that I have to play on that turn. But with the amount of mana I have available I should be able to play any spell. And uh, of course I can play a land as well if that's what flips. Okay, well that thing has reach, but it doesn't help against death touch. Now I'm still gonna play the Woolsock Splitter here, I think. Yeah, I can try double blocking with the 4-2 and 1-1 in here. They might have a trick of removal spell, but at least they're gonna use it on a token, not on one of, not on one of my actually relevant things. Well, that is very unfair. <laughs> I can't even jump block it because I don't I have. I'm. I mean, all of my protection from red is just insane here. I guess I can draw my black removal spell, but but this is now um, this is now just horrible. I have to get life link now. Uh, I guess I could have moved. Um, I mean, I lose to the sword. It's just uh, whatever. I can double block the Sky Warden, but it's just uh, because I have th this and this. But I mean, I can only give six power on my guys. I can't kill it. But I don't have to double block it now, I guess. Do I want to move this thing? Yeah, I do because I want to block the 3 3, of course. So let's do this. Wow, the Sword of Fortune Frontier. So, sort of, yes, Fortune Frontier. It's such a crazy good card against my almost mono red deck. Okay, now they can kill the Skitter Fang. Sure. Do I win with the Blast? I mean, I, I get to do this, so that 11. Is this enough? No, it's not. Infectious <laughs> They got an infectious bite and a vault charge. Maybe they have mana for only one of them, but I don't even care at this point. So there's nothing I can do about the sword here. So I'll just, uh, you know, have the same deck. I'm on the fir first time in this match. I will be on the play. Hopefully, I get a good hand allowing me to curve out. That equipment is unfair. I can't keep this hand. Well... I'm gonna keep this and I draw. If I don't draw a mountain, I will concede. I'm not gonna go to 5 against that. Why, why do I have like a 5 lander into which, you know, 5 drop only and uh, then, then 1 lander here? I'm gonna put down this camp here. I'm gonna draw a, a mountain or well, I guess a swamp for the turn two is fine enough, allowing me to play my two drop. 
But if I don't get to play this on turn 3 or turn 4, probably game will be over, so um, that's just a non-game here. Opponent is deciding on the mulligan though, let's wait. I will pause the recording. Okay, they kept 7, so I'm gonna keep it. Scamp goes away, and uh, if I miss my land drop on the next turn, I think I'm just gonna maybe wait for one more turn. Wait for one more turn, if I draw a land now, then I can continue other than that. Okay, it was the wrong kind of land, but maybe the opponent is actually missing their green here. If they miss the land drop right now, wow, this turned into a game I can... <laughs> so both of us kept a really sketchy hand, although they kept a 7 card hand, but they were on the play. They have to discard the hand size, so if I now draw a mountain, that's actually just fantastic. So can I do that? Can I draw a mountain here? I have 10 of them in the deck. Not quite that lucky. But I mean, if they don't draw lands either, it's they're gonna have to keep discarding to hand size. <laughs> All right then, <laughs> what, a, what a weird game. So they had the early game, but no mana for that. Okay, that's not a forest at least. They kill this thing now, I'm sure. Yep, come on, time for a mountain. No. <laughs> Now it's my turn to discard the hand size. Wow, what is this? Uh, I'm not gonna have the fusling. And now they get the forest. Okay, and they have. Yeah. I for a small moment thought I might be able to win. Well, I mean, I guess I, guess I still can. Let's just play the game now. Both of us, both of us had a very slow start. Now the only thing is that if they have the sword, I'm gonna insta concede this time because I'm not gonna beat them from this position. They didn't have the sword. But they have now the board advantage. Uh, board advantage, especially because they can play another. Yeah. Um, they had a better continuation than I had. This is bad. I needed the, I needed the land now for the. Man, how many draws? They were. I have drawn seven cards. Well, I guess I kept one lander, so two of the seven were lands. Um, yeah, I mean, this, these three trees are good enough for them. I know I could just kill one of them, but I'm gonna take six instead. And uh, yeah, they have all spells too. They did discard two, and I discarded one, but now. It's still a non-game, I'm gonna say that. Especially when they have the 5-5 five, five for which I don't really have an answer. I mean, I can double block, try to double block, but I'm taking you know, another 6 from those guys. So, yeah. It's it's a game over now. I mean, they did miss their third land drop a couple of times, but I needed to still draw faster my own thing. And there's the sword. Bye bye. So this was some... Basically, I, um, I lost two games with the sword here. I mean, I th in theory, could have maybe still stabilized without the sword, but uh, games two and games three, I lost to the crazy bomb rare, which is especially crazy against the deck that has mostly red creatures. Um, so there's no shame in that, but it's, it's of course sad to, you know, miss out on the trophy because of that kind of stuff. But it happens, and I have one with bomb rares too. The deck was good. I don't know if there's much to say. The format is quite, you know, old already, so I don't have to discuss every card here. Uh, I will say just that the Char Forger is really good. And the run is, as you saw, a card that you really want to get rid of if your opponent has this, because it, the drains are so so relevant. Drain 2 is a lot, even if it happens only once. And when it happens more than once, it's going to be a huge, huge impact. But yeah, that was it. The draft would have been maybe more fun if I uh, kind of forced this, and there was a path in it. I had that mana fixing, but I got something like... Um, I guess it was the Tar Forger that made me really want to go to red. Or did I get the... I, I got the, two of these slashes too that wanted me to... That made, made me want to keep uh, drafting red. And of course red was also very open, but you know, it would be fun to resolve this in limited. Maybe someday it will still happen. Um, that's it. Let's claim the prize and uh, I will see you in the next video, which will happen in a couple of days. Thank you and bye bye.